Everybody, welcome back to Bite Time. Harry McCullough here. It was a busy weekend for our local law enforcement around the area. Here to talk about a couple of key arrests uh, is Blake Tabor, Lieutenant, uh, Cameron Parish Sheriff's Office. Thanks so much uh, for being with us, Blake. Uh, a couple of incidents on Saturday, and, and actually things we don't see a whole lot around here, and, and I'm glad that you guys were on it. Absolutely. Some pretty interesting ones, to be honest. Um, first one, I, I'd like to start off by commending the deputy uh, that was responsible for this. Of course, we're not going to name him at this point, um, but tremendous job that was done, uh, and, and you'll understand why after, as we get into it. But uh, this particular patrol deputy on Friday uh, was given some information from an anonymous resident about a gentleman by the name of Quay Shane Taylor. Uh, he is a 33-year-old male originally from Thibodeau area. Uh, the information that was given to our patrol deputy is that he was a wanted fugitive out of the state of Ohio. Uh, and when that information was given, uh, the information received was that it was in relation to a sexually motivated crime with a child under the age of 13. So, of course, anytime we hear that, uh, it brings, you know, the safety concern to a whole different level. Um, what people don't realize is they, you know, I, I believe that people in the community think that it's as easy as checking a computer database and then mm. miraculously this warrant wow. pops up. And it's not always the case. There could be a multitude of circumstances as to why that is not the case, um, but it took some extra planning on the part of this patrol deputy to make sure that he contacted the agency directly to verify this arrest warrant. And of course, being from Ohio, that could take some time. He worked on that extremely diligently for the, throughout the day on Friday. Um, ultimately, later on Friday evening, he was able to confirm that warrant existed uh, they were able to get that into the National Crime Information Center, which we refer to as NCIC. That warrant was uploaded, and then ultimately on Saturday morning, shortly after 7 o'clock, they arrived at an address in the 300 block of Highland Drive, uh, and they were able to quickly take him into custody. Now, he was on the run? Uh, was that kind That's of That's correct. It That's uh, correct. He was last seen uh, in the Ohio area about 10 days prior uh, to us discovering his, him being here. Uh, of course, we're not talking about the link between the, the address and, and him, um, but it was where we located him, and ultimately he was taken into custody. Uh, in, in, did he go peacefully? or He did. Uh, he arrested without incident. Uh, of course, we didn't do any type of interview with him or anything. You know, We have no control over that investigation. Uh, but ultimately, he was placed into custody, and he is at the jail right now being held on a no bond. Um, and that particular agency in Ohio was taking the proper procedures. And, and he'll have to be transported. A absolutely. And, and he'll be extradition. extradited. Yeah. Yep, extradited back to Ohio. And, and that process takes take anywhere from five to ten days. So uh, he will be in our custody until he is remanded to Ohio. Okay. So we'll follow that case for sure. Uh, also, that same day, uh, you guys see a stolen vehicle and also take action. on it. Absolutely. So later on in that day, shortly before 5 p.m., uh, patrol deputies were made aware of an outstanding stolen vehicle um, in the Terrebonne Parish area. Luckily for our patrol deputies, they were in the area of 311 and Highway 90 patrolling that particular area. Uh, a very alert patrol deputy happened to notice a vehicle traveling on Highway 90 that sort of fit that description. Um, as he got unit placement behind that vehicle, he was able to quickly determine that that was the vehicle in question. Um, at that point, the vehicle continued on uh, and ultimately took the Chacahula exit. Um, again, we, we were trying to stage units in the area in the event of something like this happening. Uh, so as he got to that Chacahula exit near Highway 20, um, officer initiated his lights and the vehicle was off and running. Um, vehicle ultimately took a left on the Highway 20, driving to Bull Run Road. The vehicle was driving uh, very high rates of speed. Ultimately, the officer lost sight of that vehicle for a period of a few seconds, uh, and then ultimately resurfaced in a cane field. As the officer initially saw that vehicle, he saw the two suspects running from the vehicle into a cane field. Um, that single officer did an amazing job of coordinating all the units and telling them where to go. They quickly surrounded that particular cane field, uh, and then our canine division responded. Um, they began talking using the loudspeaker to try to get the suspects to come out. Uh, you see the first suspect, Lance Dupuy, uh, was actually brought out of the cane field and he did so under his own power. 
Um, he, he, of course, turned himself over to authorities at that point. The other suspect, Jesse Stevenson, um, was not as cooperative. Um, ultimately, efforts to get him to remove himself from the cane field uh, were not successful, and then ultimately a canine was deployed on the cane field, uh, and ultimately he was able to be taken into custody. Yeah, that's got to be scary for law enforcement to try and chase somebody into a cane field where you can't see where you're going. So nice to have the canine. There. Absolutely. So, you know, we have procedures and protocols in place for, for doing those sorts of things, um, but it was, uh, it was a positive to have that happen. Now, Ultimately, Mr. Stevenson suffered some minor injuries as a result of his apprehension, so he was checked out at a local hospital before being taken to the criminal justice complex. Now, uh, you know, we see on recent trend, crime trends, especially in bigger metropolitan areas, where car theft is a big deal. Do we have that big of an issue in Terrebonne Parish? No. I mean, collectively speaking, I wouldn't say we have the same problem as New Orleans. Uh, of course, you know, our, our community is much different than, than that community as well. But um, I think we do a very good job of making sure that we are taking proactive measures to stop that type of behavior here. Uh, but again, there's been a multitude of vehicles that have been stolen out of other areas and brought into our community. So uh, I think we do a very good job of, of trying to catch those perpetrators. Yeah. The Hyundais and the Kias were an issue, too, in New Orleans. A lot of big percentage were those vehicles. We hadn't seen that just from people no, you know, no up, TikTok video. Yeah, no uptrend in any certain type of vehicle. Um, you know, the vast majority of what we see is vehicles that are being left unsecure, which is why we're always promoting right. make sure you lock your vehicles. Like, like doors on. Well, Blake, we appreciate it. Appreciate the heads up. Good police work by your department. We'll be right back with more Body Time right after this. 